like, where do I get on? Am I being crazy? <laughs> Click on it, right? Wait, what the heck? Don't even get me started. What does that mean? Is this real for real happening, you guys? Okay. Like what? Hold on. Can you guys see me going into my Gmail account or just, yeah? I'm like, can you see on my accounts and stuff? <laughs> I have nothing to hide. So here we go. <laughs> That can't be happening. That really can't be Social distancing and operations. We are improving equipment. Can you see it? See it? Processes and finding efficiencies okay. all over. We've had more time with our family too to connect with our kids as adults, and it's been so much fun being all together. So many of you are using this time to improve your homes and gardens, making the most you of what that? surrounds you. I've seen so many of your projects on Facebook and Instagram. A lot of you are also finding joy in being outdoors riding bikes, taking long walks, and enjoying the sun. You've been discovering new hobbies, reading new books, and finally taking the you see it or no? you've always wanted to take. No. It is all so beautiful to witness. Hold on. But what has really touched our hearts the most is this. how you've reached out to each other and in your communities. You have proven the power of simple acts of kindness, empathy, and compassion. The right perspective is what allows us to share love and kindness with others. So that's our goal, to maintain our sensey perspective built on gratitude and a belief in who we are and what we can achieve together, that we can and do bring value to the world. Sensi has always been a light to others. Can you hear them? Thank you for shining brighter. And you just can't see them. Year. For everyone who needs the extra encouragement and support. And the entire Sensi Home Office team will keep supporting you from here. We have so much to share with you today, but before we move on, we want to see you. Take a moment now to post a selfie with hashtag SFR2020 and show us where you're tuning in and who you're watching Reunion with. And get ready for a few major reveals and announcements. For now, we'd like to introduce you to our official Cincy Family Reunion host. 
Chan, Sensi's vice president. President. Hold on, I'm going to start again. Development and training. Deb Bowden. Take it away, Deb. Thanks so much, Heidi and Orville. As they said, we are so glad you're what here. Is Though we miss that we can't all come together this summer, I know we'll still have an incredible experience. Heidi and Orville did a great job setting up our theme, but as I think about it personally, I'm reminded of the time I spent as a news producer in Minneapolis. Is in it good? Minneapolis. I know. Janine, you are giving me life. Okay. Midwestern winters are notorious for being long and cold, but this particular year was especially bad because we had an inversion for an extended period of time. It was cloudy for weeks on end, so much so that everyone was starting to get really depressed. But a few smart airlines banded together for a unique initiative. They realized that while they couldn't change the weather, they could help change some perspectives. So they offered to fly people up above the inversion to see the sun. For me, it was a good reminder that the sunshine was there all along. We just couldn't see it. Over the past four months, I don't think our Sensi family has had much of a problem seeing the sunshine that surrounds us even during these unprecedented times. That's not to say we haven't experienced our own challenges as individuals, as families, as employees, as leaders. But what sets Sensi apart is our ability to find that light and be a bright spot for others. To find ways to lift each other up, to view challenges as opportunities and not problems. And perhaps that's because we always have something to look forward to, whether it's a party, an exciting new catalog season, an upcoming incentive, or the arrival of fall. Speaking of fall, it's starting to feel a little chilly in here. And you know what that means. It's time to reveal the treats we have planned for our harvest, autumn, and Halloween collections. Take a look. Hi! Oh, Happy welcome! Halloween. You guys look so cute. Here, come here. Come here. Come a little closer. We love your costumes. We gotta check them out. Oh yeah, look at them. real furry. So, so you're Mike and you're Sully. Now you're probably expecting to get some candy. But we nice. thought you'd rather get something from the Harvest and right. Halloween collection. Yeah. Yeah, Scentsy. Because you are at the Scentsy house. Okay, are you ready? Here's what we're going to give you. This is part of the Harvest hand soap three-pack. And Sully, you're going to get two. Butter pecan and cider mill. And Mike, you get my favorite. Caramel apple craze hand soap. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. All right. Happy Thank you Halloween. guys. Happy Halloween. I think they like that. That's much better than candy. Yes. What a great idea. We have more trick or treaters. <laughs> Who can it be? Hi. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Halloween. It looks like Maleficent and Groot. I love your costumes. I bet you were looking for some candy, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we have something better. For Maleficent, how about a fragrance flower in apples and cinnamon sticks fragrance? It's so beautiful. <laughs> I <laughs> okay, and for you, I have a three pack of Harvest Oils, and it, it comes in three fragrances Graham Cracker Crumble, Rosemary Shortbread, and Matcha Chamomile. You're gonna you. love it. You seem so excited about it. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Guys. Take care, Groot. 
Bye. Look, come again. They were cute. They were super cute. More trick or treaters. I wonder who it can be. <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh, how spooky. You two trick look great. Treat, trick or treat. Okay, you two are in for a treat. We have our harvest um, sugar scrubs. Ursula, you're going to get butter pecan. And Evil Queen, we have a special treat for you. You get pumpkin cinnamon swirl sugar scrub. Yay! How exciting! Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! Bye! Bye! You're welcome! Bye! Those are adorable. Oh, hi! So glad you're here. Come on in. We have so much more to show you about our Harvest and Halloween collection. We haven't even got to warmers and wax. We always design special seasonal products for each Scentsy market, and we want all consultants to see what's out there by region. Let's start with the Harvest Collection products launching in the United States and Canada. First up, we have the Fall is Calling Warmer and the Fall Foliage Mini Warmer. Along with the gorgeous Scentsy Bar 3-pack, including Bright Cider Life, Pumpkin Chai, and Pumpkin Tiramisu. And these scents are also available at Scentsy Pods. Heidi and Arnold, if I may. Oh, hi, Britta. Hi, Britta. It's Britta Walter, our Germany and Austria country manager. What are you doing here? I just wanted to pop in and say that the Paul Foliage Mini Warmer is also available in region two. I just love the gold leaf pattern. Isn't it so pretty? Thanks, Britta. Anytime, bye. Bye, Britta. Next up, for the Halloween lovers out there, we have the Under My Spell Warmer, which looks just like a stack of spell books. And this cute Luminary Jack Warmer. you Oh, hey there. It's Faith Pucky, our Australia and New Zealand country manager. What's up, Faith? I just wanted to check. We're getting Luminary Jack in Region 3, right? You got it, Faith. Does your family celebrate Halloween? We decorate and dress up every year. This warm-up will be perfect. Ah, you'll have to send us a picture of your kids all dressed up. Will do. Bye, Heidi and Oma. Bye. Bye, Faith. See you later. Next, we do have one warmer that's only available in Region 2. I can help with that. Hi, Holly. It's Holly Baker, our country manager for the UK, Ireland, the Netherlands, and Spain. Go ahead and tell us about the Region 2 warmer. Of course. It's the Leaves You Happy Warmer, and I actually think it works beautifully all year round. We are thrilled to have it. We're happy to offer it. Thanks, Holly. No problem. Bye. Our last couple of products are only available in Region 2, Region 3, and Mexico. Did someone say Mexico? Oh, hi, Susan. It's Susan Averett, our Mexico country manager. Since you're here, why don't you tell us about our final products? For sure. The underwrapped mini warmer is so cute, it's scary. Pair it with the Apple Ever After Stency Bar 3 pack, which includes Appleberry, I Oh My, and Apple Pickin'. These Stency Bars are fabulous and are also available in Stency Pods as well. Our Apple fragrances are always so popular this time of year. Thanks, Susan. My pleasure. Bye, Adios. Susan. So that does it for our Harvest and Halloween products. Everything we shared will be available starting September 1st. Until then, Happy, Happy Halloween! Now this is Halloween. This place looks really dreadful. I love it. Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! No way! You guys look great! So do you.
love the costumes. We match. <laughs> We've been kind of obsessed with The Nightmare Before Christmas since last Halloween. Our Jack Skellington warmer was our best-selling warmer ever. It sold out in one day. One day. To be honest, we don't have any candy for you. I'm so sorry. But we do have something better. Much better. Oh, oh, oh. Haven't you heard of, of peace and goodwill towards men? The children are expecting me. It can't be. They caught him? Please, come to your oh, senses. Is that who I think it is? Um, it's nobody. Don't look Tell over us, there. Look over here. Don't look pay attention. Here. We have something very special for you. Welcome to the Nightmare Before Christmas, the sequel. Our designers must have watched the movie hundreds of times to get the details just right. Well, we'll be bringing back our best-selling insanely popular Jack Skellington warmer. But we're also haunting smaller spaces this year with the new Jack Skellington Pumpkin King mini warmer. And this Halloween, we'll have not one, but two Nightmare Before Christmas fragrances. Two. We'll be bringing back Jack's obsession, of course, but we'll also be introducing a new one called Halloween Town. I bet that smells so good. My favorite thing about these fragrances are the labels. Each scent has four unique labels to collect, including one rare label that features the most beautiful artwork. <laughs> but you'll have to wait to see those. For now, let's get to your treats. For you, little Jack, we have the Jack Skellington Scentsy Buddy with the Jack's Obsession Scent Pack. And for Sally, a Sally Scentsy Buddy with Halloween Town scent pack. Thank you. How polite. Well, Jack and Sally, what do you think? It's a nice Spectacular. <laughs> awesome. We're so glad you love it. Now, let's get you two on your way. Only 365 days until next Halloween. Wishing you plenty of nightmares until then. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Welcome to 12 Days of Scentsy with your hosts, Heidi and Orville Thompson. Hey everyone, with just 155 days until Christmas, it's the perfect time to start making your list and checking it twice. It looks like my lovely wife Heidi is already in that Christmas spirit. Well, we do make a big deal of the holidays, as you can see. Maybe you should put this on. Oh, yeah. I'll help you. Thank you. And then we can match. <laughs> We're equally festive. Now, just like, how do I look? You look awesome. <laughs> how do we look? Christmassy. Okay. Just like our 12 Days of Cincy calendar in our holiday collection, this life-size replica is packed with holiday cheer. And the best part, everything inside is available globally. We have a lot to share, so let's show them what's behind door number 12. Okay, it is fragrance flower in Christmas Cottage and very snowy spruce. 
Oh, and they smell so festive. Okay, now let's show what is behind door number five. Ah, uh, if you love our diffusers, you're going to want this new holiday oil three pack in fig cookie, holiday shortbread, and peppermint everything. Knock, knock. Sounds like we have a visitor behind door number eight. Who could it be? Hi, Faith. Hi. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. I am so excited about the new Kids products in the holiday collection. I just couldn't resist popping by to share them with you all. What do you have for us, Faith? Go ahead and open up door number three. Introducing uh, Bitty Buddies. These adorable characters, an elephant, unicorn, and sloth, are inspired by a few of our favorite Scentsy Buddies, and they come in black raspberry vanilla. Now this is the best part. They're squeezable. <laughs> Kids of all ages will love collecting Bitty Buddies. But you know, one thing, I wish we had something a little more Christmassy though. Good thing we know how to make holiday wishes come true. Open door number five. Up here. Aha! We also have narwhal, penguin, and a snowman, Bitty Buddies. Wait, wait, what is a narwhal? Is that like some fantasy creature? Is it a real thing? It's a real thing. It's a unicorn of the sea. And all three of these little guys come in very merry cranberry. Perfect fragrance choice. They're adorable. Plus, the three holiday Bitty Buddies are wrapped in mystery packaging. You'll know what you're ordering, but it'll be a fun surprise when the kids open them Christmas morning. That's brilliant. They'll also be great for stocking stuffers. Thanks, Faith. Happy holidays, everyone. Bye. Bye. Who could that be? Well, let's see. Fröhliche Weihnachten, Heidi und Orwell, and hello, everyone at home. Hi, Hi Britta. Britta. Thanks for joining us. I'm so happy to be here. I'm watching you from Berlin. You two must be exhausted. Why don't you take a break and enjoy a cup of tea? No, not that kind of tea. See what's behind door number six, Orwell. I get it. It's Scentsy Soak in Winterberry Apple Tea. This was one of our best sellers last year. And one of my favorites. But do you have anything new? Check out what's behind door number nine. Aha! It's the new Scentsy Body Sugar Scrub in Winterberry Apple Tea. And Perfect Peppermint. And to help with all those holiday homeworks, see what's behind door number 10. Awesome. The perfect peppermint clean bundle, including counter clean and dish soap. Get your home ready for the holidays. Plus, it's great to have a few on hand for last minute gifts. Thanks, Britta. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. They're working us hard. I can't wait to use that Scentsy Soak. But we're not done yet. Oh, it looks like we have another visitor behind door number eight. Hey, it's Susan. Hi, Susan. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad, Heidi Yorval. I can't wait to show you what's behind door number two, Heidi. It's the Minnie Mouse Holiday Buddy Clip in our Mickey Mouse and Friends fragrance. But where there's a Minnie Mouse, there's gotta be a Mickey Mouse. Check behind door number 11. There he is. They make the perfect holiday pair. Just like us, Heidi. So true. <laughs> so thank you, Susan. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Another guest sounds like door number five. 
Oh, hi, Holly. Hi, guys. I just wanted to pop in and wish you all a very happy Christmas and share what's behind door number one. It's the Let It Snow Scentsy Bar three pack in Feeling Pine, Very Blessed, and Happy Holiday. They smell amazing. But what if we wanted to enjoy them on the go? Check behind door number seven. The same festive fragrances are also available to purchase separately as Scentsy Pods. And I know just the thing to go with them. Check behind door number one. Oh, it's the new spin wall fan diffuser with a snowflake light. Everyone has been begging for a wall fan diffuser with a light, and it's perfect for the holidays. When you plug it in, it projects the most beautiful snowflake pattern. It's so festive. Thanks for your help, Holly. Thank you. Take care. Anytime, you two. There is one more global product to reveal before we drive out of sight, or we'll check door number 10. Okay. Ah, it's the To All A Good Night Mini Warmer. This warmer completely transforms when lit, making it the perfect Christmas nightlight. It's so beautiful. I can't think of a better way to wrap things up. Now, the holiday collection launches October 1st. And don't forget, you can also get your own 12 Days of Scentsy calendar, just like this one, filled with all sorts of fragrant samples. Stay tuned to see the entire holiday collection for your region. There are many more warmers for us to share. Happy holidays. Take care, we love you. Here are the harvest, Halloween, and holiday products available in your region. I'm so excited for all of this stuff. See anything you like? The Holiday Collection landing page and marketing assets will be available on September 7th to give you plenty of time to plan your holiday sales. And the Harvest Collection landing page is available August 3rd 
on your personal websites. Encourage your customers to check it out. They can sign up to receive email notifications when the Harvest, Autumn, and Halloween collection products are available to purchase on September 1. Tools to help you pre-market these collections will also be available in the marketing section of Sensi Success today, including images you can share on social media and assets for Photify. It's interesting how much we've come to rely on social media, especially in light of social distancing. It's how you promote your business, conduct virtual parties, and share your life with friends near and far. It's also where you as consultants come together to interact with each other and celebrate your victories and milestones. Well, we have a brand new milestone to celebrate in 2020. Our 15-year consultants. These consultants joined between July 1, 2004 and June 30th, 2005 the very first year since he was in business. They were among the first to take a leap of faith and sign up for Sensi. And they've been here for every moment, big and small. Each time we launched a new product line or expanded Sensi into a new country, they've been working, innovating, and mentoring new consultants all along. I'm sure they'd agree things look a little differently now than when they attended the first ever Sensi convention at the Holiday Inn in Boise, Idaho, way back in 2005. Back then, I'm sure they never dreamed they would one day be part of a family of consultants that is over 195,000 strong and growing at a record pace or that they would be watching this annual event with 30,000 other consultants near and far. We have 17 consultants celebrating their 15th anniversary who registered for SFR. The impact they've had on the Sensi business and on so many lives around the world is impossible to measure. We cannot thank or celebrate them enough. Their names are posted in the recognition gallery of the event website, but we also invited them to share pictures of when they first joined Sensi and what they look like today. You are sure to spot a familiar face or two. They've changed a lot in the past 15 years, but one thing that remains is their love for Sensi. Enjoy, and congratulations to everyone celebrating your 15th anniversary.
how fun. I know I speak for the entire home office team when I say we are so happy you've stuck with us all these years. Sticking with it is one of the keys to long-term success with your life and your Sensi business. And I can think of no better way to flex your stick to muscle than participating in our Sensi wellness program. From eating better to moving more, we're committed to helping every consultant become the best version of themselves. I had the opportunity to chat with our wellness director, Marlo Salomonson, at the Sensi Gym to find out what's in store for Sensi Wellness in 2020 and beyond. Take a look. Hello, Marlo. Thanks so much for having me over to the Wellness Center. Absolutely. Welcome to the gym. I want to make a note that I have been here before, but not as often as you, for sure. You've definitely been here. And you are the star of the show when it comes to wellness. You're the expert in all these things, and that's the focus of our conversation. We know that healthy consultants are happy consultants, and that's one of the reasons we do wellness programs or fitness activities here at SFR. I understand, though, and you and I have talked about this, that there's a data connection between wellness programs and consultant productivity. Tell us more. So our wellness, some of our most successful consultants participate in the wellness program and they find value in it. They are also more likely to earn a higher PRV than those who don't participate, which is really pretty cool. And there, there's a large percentage of them that are likely to stay past that four month period as well. Again, cool data. So that's why we continue to create these programs and content every month as well great support for successful consultants. Yeah. Challenges are a big part of our wellness programs, and I know we have a new Fill Your Cup Challenge starting August 1st. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Fill Your Cup Challenge, we launch a new program at SFR every year, and this year, of course, is no different. But this year, I wanted to focus in on, you know, eating some good food. So many of us just have a tendency to grab, you know, go through the drive throughs or grab the prepackaged stuff, we want to eat more stuff that comes off the tree or out of the ground. So that's where Fill Your Cup was born. So all you have to do is eat two cups of vegetables, one and a half cups of fruit every day for 30 days. Pretty simple. You can register five days before the challenge, which of course is August 1st, and we'll send you out an email invitation to get you started as well. What if I miss the sign up window? No big deal. We have a new challenge every month. So which is really awesome, and it's a different challenge every month. And one thing is, BU is available at any time. And what kind of content does that include? So BU is based on positive psychology. It's a personal development program helping you to look for what's right in your life and to have more gratitude and to build resilience as well. I'll certainly use a little bit more of that. Let's go back to fill your cup. <laughs> 30-day challenge, and I know that many of our challenges are strategically 30 days. What's the science or magic around that time frame? Well, funny that you mentioned that because, you know, we've done challenges in the past that are 15 days, 30 days, 90 days, 120, and 30 days is really that sweet spot because it's long enough for you to create a good habit in your life and that you can carry that on as well and you don't fall off. So it's perfect. The Fill Your Cup Challenge isn't the only new thing coming this year, and I wanted to make sure we got to those as well. What else do consultants have to look forward to around wellness? So I'm really excited to announce that the wellness program is going global. It's going to be available for everyone, and we're starting that with the Fill Your Cup Challenge. So lots more to come on that. Everybody that is in every region can participate in the Fill Your Cup starting August 1st. So exciting. I know consultants have been asking about that for a while. It's great to deliver. Anything else in store? So yes, we have a little bit of a change coming. Everybody normally goes to cincywellness.com. We are changing that. We're migrating all that information over to the training section or training center. There'll be a wellness section there to have all that housed. That information will be housed there as well. So it's going to be awesome. So more to come. Just keep watching your news tab on the workstation for all that information. Fantastic. Thanks so much for having me, Marlo, spending this time to chat. I think we have you slated to do a little stretch break in the last session. Yeah, stretch, energy, it's going to be fun. Okay, we'll see you then. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Deb. For more wellness information, tune in to the Wellness Call at 9 a.m. Pacific time on the second Wednesday of every month. We're always looking for new ways to motivate you to stretch yourselves both literally and figuratively, and to expand your comfort zone so you can learn and grow. 
a magic of SFR is that you get to hear inspiring stories from consultants who have done just that. Last week, I had the opportunity to interview one such consultant, Director Tennille Lullum from Oxley Vale, New South Wales, Australia. Take a look. Well, Tennille, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate your help. I need to ask first, because we had to reschedule, how was your holiday? It was fabulous. It was good to get away. Wonderful. Yeah. Was it a wintry kind of getaway? Because it's a bit colder, right? It, it is our winter, but we went to the coast, so it was quite warm. Very nice, very nice. It was swimming in it's, the pool on the beach. Oh, sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. Well, I thought as we get started, it would be helpful to hear your Sensi story. I don't know if you're aware, we have 38,000 people registered for SFR. And according to our records, about half of them are new. So as we look at plugging in these additional videos, many people might not be aware of who you are and your Sensi story. And that seemed like a good place to start. So tell me a little bit about what brought you to Sensi. Um, well, my journey started three years ago. Um, and I was an avid candle user. However, my second son um, copped a third degree burn from a candle. And so, while I still wanted the fragrance in the house, we wanted a safer option. So, that's where my friend came in and bought me my first ever warmer and a wax, and I was instantly hooked. Wow, so, wow, 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 wow. And tell me a little bit about your path. Did you, did you accelerate quickly to bringing on other team members, or did you just start as kind of the hobbyist, right, since you love the product so much? Initially, I started just to purchase my own goodies, um, which was fabulous, and I was quite content doing that. Very soon after my journey started, my sister signed up, and so we were working together. And from there, it snowballed, and yes, I did move very, very fast. Once I saw the potential that it could um, offer, um, especially I, I suffered chronic anxiety and PTSD, um, and my husband thought it was an amazing opportunity for me to step outside my comfort zone constantly and help improve my mental health as well. Wow. So, bless, bless your heart. You know, I've talked with a lot of consultants who talk about having anxiety and mm -hmm. still succeeding in this role, which requires, you know, talking to other people as we are now. Mm -hmm. What's helped you on that path? I think uh, the ongoing support that we have from other consultants as well, the like-mindedness and, you know, there is always somebody that you can talk to who could possibly be in that similar situation or just be somebody to talk to. Um, we really are a family and when, um, you know, you, you go to these sense events and things, it's more evident than ever. So it's, I attended my first in Melbourne and just the support and the hugs that we can't do right now, but just the familiar faces and everybody's happy to you know, congratulate you or give you a hug or talk, share business and share their stories. Well, I love that. Speaking of people who are always there to give you a hug and that family connection, I see we have some special visitors on our Zoom call. Oh, Can you see hi. How are you? We didn't want to make you nervous, but we oh, wanted to give you a hug. Yes, and, and we're actually, you just mentioned congratulations. So. so we wanted to, we noticed that you're one of very few people in the company that earned both annual mentor and annual sales. So we wanted to come on and congratulate you for being one of those very few. But we want to add one more award to that. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm cry. You are Region 3's Alice Kalili Moku Shiny Star Award earner this year. <laughs> Woohoo! Congratulations and thank you for being so awesome. We love you. Very cool. <laughs> oh, now I do need a hug. <laughs> I know, I know, it's terrible. Hug. <laughs> I need a hug. Yeah, do you, you want to go check your door, Tennille? Sure. <laughs> yeah. 
Congratulations, Danielle. Thank you, Faith. Make sure you get some good pictures. to arrange a hug. Thank you, Faith. And now you know that this whole, um, I don't know what she called it, but training call was just so we can congratulate you. <laughs> she stitched me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited for you. And you um, truly exemplify Sensi's values and um, are are an influencer. People people look up to you. <laughs> Thank we're so you. grateful for that. We would have come ourselves, but they won't let us fly to Australia. So <laughs> faith is a good proxy. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so okay. much. Make sure you get some good pictures. Uh, yes. Thank okay. you. And sorry we had to do it this way instead of on stage, but this is the best we could do under the pandemic circumstances. So we hope you appreciate um, our efforts, even though it's not as uh, we would hope. Um, we hope this was special for you because you are a very special consultant. Thank you so much. Love you. Thanks, Danielle. Bye-bye. Bye. Congratulations to Neil. It was fun to be there for your special moment. The opportunity to hear from and recognize consultants like Neil is one of the things I treasure most about SFR. In fact, it's right up there with Heidi and Orville's keynotes. That's why I'm thrilled to turn the time over to our co-CEO, Heidi Thompson. Her keynotes have the power to touch our hearts and inspire us to grow and transform. Whether she encourages us to embrace childlike wonder, adopt a growth mindset, or discover the magic of sitting on a bench and taking a rest, I'm sure what Heidi's about to share will undoubtedly become a highlight of this year's event. Hi, Sensi. Just when I started to get comfortable doing a keynote on stage, a worldwide pandemic hits and everything changes. Well, almost everything. I still researched and stressed and wrote for weeks to put down on paper my best efforts at sharing a message that will bless your lives. I realize I have relied on your hugs and the energy of the stage and audience at SFR to get ready. I don't have that this year, so I'm extra nervous about how this will all come across. What I'm trying to say is this is very different and it makes me nervous, but there is a huge silver lining. There are over 38,000 of you out there watching right now. And for over half of you, this is your very first SFR. I could never have reached so many of you in one room. Before I get started, I wanna share my heart with all of you. We are in an unprecedented time, at least in my lifetime, full of collective pain and grief and anxiety and change. It seems like all aspects of our lives are being disrupted. Everything is changing. Everything seems uncertain. But through this, there are so many heroes emerging. Doctors, nurses, and biotech scientists on the front lines of the health pandemic. First responders, police officers, daycare workers, and grocery store clerks who put themselves on the line every day so the rest of us can be as comfortable as possible during this crazy time. 
I honor the change makers who peacefully protest generations of racial injustice. I especially want to thank our wonderful employees. Sensi has never seen change at this pace. Not only have our teams had to adjust to social distancing and employing personal protection procedures to stay safe and healthy, they have had to quadruple production in three months. I think when we have a chance to look back, we will see this time as an absolute miracle at Sensi. You are all very lucky to have such dedicated employees at your side. It would be easy for me to focus on the bad news and say this is the worst year ever, but that is not how I feel. On a side note, if you have seen me speak in the past, you know how much I love music. I find so much inspiration through it and I love to share that with you. This year is no different. In 2015, we took our executive team on a retreat to New York City. Chuck, his wife Shannon, Orville and I got tickets to see the musical Hamilton. This was back with the original cast long before it became a worldwide sensation, but we were still very lucky to get tickets. We enjoyed it so much, the following year we took the kids to see it. Needless to say, when I learned that it would be on Disney Plus, I knew exactly where we would be on the evening of July 3rd. We decided to spend the 4th of July weekend at our cabin in McCall, just a couple hours north of the home office. Between the boating, surfing, good food, good family time, I saw everyone down on our big comfy couch and we watched Hamilton the Musical as a family. Watching it this time, and I might add with the assistance of subtitles, the musical took on a whole new meaning. The songs made me think of where we all are as a Sinti family and world community in 2020. Take the song Yorktown, for example, with these lyrics. The world turned upside down in 1781, just as it feels like the world is turned upside down today. There is so much stress and anxiety. The pandemic, protests, riots, and monument controversy in the United States, economic stress, businesses going under, and the emergence of a cancel culture with social and political arguments in almost every social media post. Just about everyone is struggling with something right now. You might not see it on social media or team calls or your daily interactions, but it's there. And then there is the sadness over all the things we have missed. Graduations, concerts, family reunions, end of the year school theater, band and choir performances, watching kids play their favorite sports. That says nothing about the incentive trip and SFR hugs that we will miss this year. We could choose to see this as a time of loss and grief, but we don't have to stay in that place. We can choose to see the world differently. When I was growing up, there was a song we learned in Sunday school. If you chance to meet a frown, do not let it stay. Quickly turn it upside down and smile that frown away. No one likes a frowning face. Change it for a smile. Make the world a better place by smiling all the while. The world does seem turned upside down right now. There is no denying that. But upside down or right side up is a matter of perspective. We have the power to change our perspective. We don't have to dwell on the upside down part. We can turn it around and smile. That is a choice that we get to make. In the musical, Eliza Hamilton made that choice when she sings. <laughs> Look around, look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. Eliza sings this refrain at several points in the musical, this time in celebration of the excitement of the time. A world turned upside down, 
or look around, look around. Whether you see 2020 as negative or positive depends entirely on your perspective. While scrolling on Pinterest for inspiration for my talk, I saw this quote by Stephen Furtick. Your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. Have you thought about your outlook on 2020? This is thought provoking. Take time to think deeply about which choice you make, prison or a passport. Is your glass half empty or half full? Will fear drive you away from connection, love, and kindness, or will you embrace this time to become the best version of yourself? Is your 2020 a great obstacle or great opportunity? Has your perspective on life changed since March? By the numbers, this would be your best year ever for sales and sponsoring. There has never been this much positive energy and engagement at Sensi. So many of you are new, and with each one of you, our Sensi family is expanded and improved. Of course, there are disappointments. But look around, and I guarantee you will see silver lining, depending on if you have a prison or passport perspective. I'm disappointed that our youngest daughter, Grace, missed out on all the milestones of her senior year of high school, prom, senior week, the traditional graduation ceremony, and celebrating with her friends. But I'm thrilled that for the first time in many years, all the kids have come home. And Grace gets to be surrounded by her sisters and brother during a summer when she thought she would be all alone. I'm disappointed that Owen's mission ended early, but the same thing happened to his girlfriend, Mia, who was serving in Paraguay. They are now reunited and are both working at Sensi. Owen has taken his two hobbies, photography and leather making, and started a business. I feel bad for our newlyweds, Emma and Easton, whose new life was upended. They came home for the weekend before the official stay-at-home order began in March. Emma is able to work her job remotely from our home while she also completes her anthropology field study. Easton is working as an operations management intern at Sensi, where they both head back to school in the fall to finish their degrees. And as a side benefit, I didn't have to get a hair and makeup person for SFR this year. Emma kindly volunteered. It is sad that Mary's job was furloughed, but she had just found out she was pregnant with her first child. Her husband, Chase, who has a great job that was supposed to start in July, had the start date pushed to November. So they've been able to spend their entire pregnancy together and are living in our travel trailer in our driveway I never thought that I would be able to spend so much time with Mary and Chase. I'm so excited to meet our first grandson in just a few months. I feel bad that our oldest, Sarah, had plans to move to Georgia from LA, but those plans were also canceled. As you may have seen on Instagram, she got engaged this month and is getting married hopefully in October. We are excited for her and are so happy to welcome her fiance, Jacob into the family. He has been able to work on his PhD and teach at the University of Georgia remotely. As their mom, it has been a huge blessing to be surrounded by all of the children for this extended period of time. We have had many family firsts in quarantine. I've loved every minute with them. And what about Sensi? I'm disappointed that I didn't get to see so many of you on our incentive trips this year to celebrate all of your accomplishments, but I am thrilled to see you spending that extra time with your teens and loved ones and spending the money that you received in lieu of the trip on other worthwhile things. I'm disappointed that we had to cancel all three of our reunions, but we are reaching four times as many of you through our SFR at home. I was worried about Sensi when fairs, markets, and shows were canceled, and shelter-in-place orders made in-home parties impossible. But you are embracing technology and your own creativity to reach goals you doubted you'd ever achieve. Sensi just turned 16 and is thriving. In the United States, 16 is the age when children first get a driver's license. 
I guess you could say Sensi is learning how to drive on its own without mom and dad. We're having our best year ever, and Orville and I can honestly say it is not because of us. Our executive team is tackling every challenge. They work so well together. I've never been more confident in the leadership at Sensi or the dedication of our employees. Meanwhile, thousands of new consultants have flocked to Sensi during this pandemic. Tens of thousands more are setting personal sales and sponsoring records because of the community built by our amazing superstar directors and future SSDs who are leading our growing Sensi family with love and renewed excitement. During my browsing on Facebook for this talk, I saw a post from Sensi consultant, superstar director, Danielle Shoup. I'd like to share part of her post. Let me tell you, I've got a love-hate relationship with this COVID craziness. Hate the feelings of being trapped in our homes, secluded from each other. While the news shows us the nastiest part of humanity, I see companies manufacturing things like disinfectants, masks, and hand sanitizers to alleviate shortages. I see people breathing, people that are normally go, 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 that are pausing and enjoying their families, their life, their homes that they work so hard for. People are laughing, playing games. I see awareness where there was lack there of before. I see people moving their bodies. I see people reading. I see people communicating. And most importantly, I see people listening, just being still and listening. Do not twist my words, friends. I know there is a pandemic, but unglue your eyes from your news feed and look around you. There is good and light and progress all around. It's not perfect, but man oh man, do I believe we needed this pause. When the world starts turning again and life resumes, are you going back differently? I think for many of us, life is drastically different than what it was three short months ago. But overall, I'm grateful for many of the changes and eye-openers. I love how she talks about the human connections she, that she sees, and I love when she said eye-openers. People are breathing, pausing, enjoying family, reading, communicating, being aware, being still. What Danny is expressing is hope in a better future. Hope helps us power through adversity by keeping us focused on better days to come. There is a Bible story in the Old Testament that I love. Caleb and Joshua were two of 12 spies sent by Moses to assess their prospects in the promised land. 10 of the 12 spies brought back a report full of fear and doubt. They believed the enemy was too great. They only saw the obstacle. Joshua and Caleb came back with a slightly different story. They represent the same faith and hope in a better future that Danny expressed. While they admitted the enemy was big, they understood God was bigger. Whether you believe in God or not, this is a story of perspective. We learn that we can't let our problems define us. Our obstacles are big, but if our vision is bigger, there is no obstacle that can limit us. With faith, we can see from a perspective higher than our own. Borrowing a perspective from above allows us to see the big picture. The overview effect is a secular example of a change in perspective similar to the way believers use faith. The overview effect is experienced by astronauts when they see the Earth for the first time from space. It is a life-changing perspective shift and a profound change that cannot be put into words. Here is what one space tourist who traveled to the space station had to say about their experience. If people can see Earth from up here, see it without those borders, see it without any differences in race or religion, they would have a completely different perspective. Because when you see it from that angle, you cannot think of your home or your country. All you can see is one Earth. I get a glimpse into what the astronauts are talking about when I see their images and hear their stories. All of us have the opportunity to experience an overview effect in our own lives 
by broadening our views in order to gain perspective. We do this by looking outside of ourselves and serving others. Orville and I have experienced a Sensi overview effect. You may see Sensi as a way of making a little extra money to pay for dance lessons or to work hard and earn an incentive trip, or even as a business to replace the income of a lost job. When we see Sensi, we don't see teams and downlines. We see Sensi as a unified community where everyone belongs and where we act in service of each other. This is a big part of how we contribute more than we take. We are a family of interconnected individuals who need to love and take care of each other. I have witnessed so many examples of that love and compassion. I've watched the Sensi community rise up during difficult times. The Sensi sister, Jonna Atkinson Bigelow, was a dear friend to my mom. She recently lost her daughter, Brinley, in an accident. We were heartbroken over the loss. Recently, we talked about her friendship with my mom. How we met Brinley at Disney World in 2016 on the last family and Simple trip. And we shared with each other our love of the musical Hamilton. Jonna shared how her Sensi family helped her through losing her precious daughter. Here is some of her story. I had just bought the cast album of Hamilton prior to the accident. We had tickets for June 11th to see it before the New York City to Bermuda cruise. It got a little misty the first time I heard it in my car. Music and my vivid imagination do that to me. I've referenced that song so many times during this journey. We really are living the unimaginable. Jonna is referring to the song, It's Quiet Uptown, that is sung in the Hamilton musical at the point where Eliza and Alexander Hamilton are grieving the death of their son. There are moments that the words don't reach. There is suffering too terrible to name. You hold your child as tight as you can and push away the unimaginable. Jonna continues. I shared Brinley's story on the Sensi Director's page and condolences and pledges to help with funeral expenses started pouring in from so many of my Sensi family whom I had met during the Sensi incentive trips and SFRs I've been blessed to attend since joining in 2011. Not only from across the US, but also from around the world. Some from Australia, Canada, Guam, Mexico, and the UK. Of course, Carolyn and Gary Page, my adopted Sensi parents in Kentucky, reached out immediately, as did Paul and Carrie Daniel, my director. Then Heidi Korobakalis and her sweet son showed up at Brinley's Celebration of Life, all the way from California. Then Debbie Blackshear and Eddie. up to her house to visit us. Golly, even as I'm typing this, the magnitude of how Cynthia has blessed my life is so overwhelming, and I'm starting to weep a bit. And that journey started with a candle fire, true beauty from ashes in ways I'd never dreamed, including living the unimaginable. Jonna goes on to talk about a home show where so many of her customers showed up just to hug her. And express their sorrow. Because often the Sensi family extends way beyond those of you who are consultants. Jonna continued, the majority of the people coming through were coming just to hug me, love me, and let me know that they were praying for all of us during this unimaginable time. To know me is to know my family, Brad, Braden, and Brindley. To know me is to know I am a part of a bigger family, my Sensi family, because that's what we are to each other. Thank you, Jonna, for allowing me to share a small window into your story. Well, most of us, 
people thankfully never know the pain of losing a child. Jonna belongs to a community where others have. Like Jonna or Joshua and Caleb or Danielle or Alexander and Eliza Hamilton, our perspective can give us a passport out of pain. And the family ties we form as we invite others to belong to our community help us, as Jonna said, create true beauty from ashes in ways we can never imagine. Community is at the center of all that we do at Senti. I'm so grateful that the Senti family was there to love and support Jonna. Just as the Senti family is there for so many of you, and for me and Orville and our family too. Being part of a community, listening to and having respect for each other and acting with love and compassion can help us gain perspective. Watching you all take care of each other and lift each other up, especially over these last few months, makes me so proud of what we have created together. That's it. And honestly, it makes it easy for me to say, I wouldn't go back to the world as it was before the pandemic for anything. And I know that there are lots of people in the world who agree with me. If you haven't seen it yet, go to YouTube and search for the video, The Great Realization from Tom Foolery. It went viral in May and currently has over 6.4 million views. It tells the history of 2020 as a bedtime story from a dad to his kids. It went viral because its message is so important. The punchline, we all preferred the world we found to the one we left behind. I don't want anyone to get sick or lose someone to coronavirus, so please don't misunderstand me. But I believe that what we have experienced throughout this time is a gift to treasure and an opportunity to reset our priorities. Can we all agree that it has been nice to have a little more time to think, to invest in ourselves, to be with our families, to appreciate each other, and the simple things like family meals together? Maybe instead of wishing for a new normal, we should instead set our sights on something more radical, a reset. I read an article recently about what business leadership might look like in a post-coronavirus future. Similar to the Great Realization video, this article is also hopeful for a better future. The author said, if we simply use the old normal as a baseline to define our new normal, while we wait patiently for a COVID-19 vaccine, we will have missed our chance to start anew. We will have squandered the opportunity to redefine how we work, how we live, how we care. I don't wanna see that happen. He goes on to talk about history and the Great War, World War I, the Great Depression of the 1930s, and the Great Recession of the 2000s. He suggests that perhaps instead of looking for a new normal in 2020, we should rescue the word great and make it positive for once. It's time for a great reset. Let us not allow ourselves, even for a nanosecond, to believe everything was normal on March 11, 2020. The coronavirus was declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization. I agree that we do need to come together and embrace what this great reset has to offer. This pandemic has given us the unexpected opportunity to step back and reevaluate what's important. So many of us complain about not having enough time. Now we've been given the rare gift of more time. Time is a theme throughout Hamilton musical because Alexander Hamilton was known for working like he was running out of time. Would his life have been different if he had slowed down? He wasn't always writing like he was running out of time. Will our lives be different if we stop living like we're running out of time? 
accept the Great Reset and actually use our time to become the best versions of ourselves, and by becoming better people, create a better world, taking time can help us to gain perspective. It allows us to think about the life and the world we want to have. I believe with all my heart that Sensi, including all of you, makes the world a better place. But we as a human race still have so much work to do. We don't have to mourn the old normal. Instead, look around. Look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. The world we have is beautiful. And life after this historic period in human history does not have to look like it did March 11th, 2020. How has your perspective changed this year, this month, this week, today? How will you gain perspective? Hope, faith, community, taking time to do things you have always wanted to do and improving yourself, slowing down and savoring time with family. These are all things we can embrace. What are you looking forward to for the rest of 2020? What do you not want to return to when this time is over? I hope you made some note of the silver lining moments I shared with you today. Now it's your turn to share with me. I really want to capture how we are embracing this time as a Sensi family and using it to make our lives better. So I invite you to take some time in the next week to share a short video story or picture that illustrates how you are gaining perspective and making the most of this time to hashtag Sensi Perspective 2020 by August 1st. We will make a video to commemorate how Sensi family is celebrating our community, our growth, and our own silver linings during this unbelievable time in 2020. Watch for it to be shared next month. I can't wait to see all of your posts and what the reset of 2020 has in store for all of us. For now, remember to look around. Look around at how lucky we are to be alive right now. I love you. So, what was your favorite moment of Heidi's speech? Share your aha moments using hashtag SFR2020 keynote. Heidi's keynote is one of my favorite experiences at SFR. And some of my favorite experiences at the home office have been sitting around a conference table with Heidi and Orville and other employees. Some really cool things have come out of those conversations, including our Bring Back My Buddy promotion. I had the opportunity to discuss this promotion and several other programs with Chief Marketing Officer Mark Stastny via Zoom. Typically, I'd be interviewing him here on the set, but we had to do his interview a little bit differently, as you'll soon hear. Take a look. As you know, our award-winning Bring Back My Bar program has been so successful. We run it twice a year, but fragrances aren't the only thing that gets retired around here. We've retired some of your favorite cuddly buddies, too. We will be celebrating the 10th anniversary of Scentsy Buddies in September, so we thought it would be fun to let you vote for which buddies you wanted us to bring back. Voting for Bring Back My Buddy closed in February, and the votes are in. I invited our Chief Marketing Officer, Mark Stastny, to share the results with you. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Deb. Thanks for having me. I see we've got you in self-quarantine. <laughs> yes, we do. This is actually my second experience with self-quarantine since, since the pandemic hit. And uh, fortunately, I and my family are all feeling well. But to be on the safe side and to make sure we're not infecting other Sensi employees, I am working from home. Good to hear that you're all safe. And thanks for keeping us safe, too. <laughs> so, Mark, which buddies are we bringing back? Well, Deb. The official winners of the Bring Back My Buddy program are Susie the Sloth, Stella the Unicorn, and last but certainly not least, Eliza the Elephant. Mark, they're adorable. When will they be available? They'll be available for purchase in September, and each buddy will have a special patch to commemorate the 10th anniversary of our Sensi Buddies. That's great. You know, it makes me wonder what other retired products we might bring back. I'm sure our consultants would appreciate that heads up. I'm sure they would as well. That's not a problem. It's part of our consultant visibility initiative. 
For a very long time now, consultants have told us that they want longer lead times and more visibility of what's coming so that they can better manage and plan for their business. That's why we started including basic information about what's coming in news articles and also populating upcoming programs and product launches and changes to the consultant calendar. Now, we have a lot of people who may not know what the consultant calendar is. Can you share more? Sure, absolutely. It's an electronic calendar that you can subscribe to in your workstation. It syncs with your personal calendar on your mobile devices, so you'll always know when new products or promotions are launching or if there's any changes to the launch date. That's great. What other things have you been up to in marketing to help consultants market their business? Well, as most consultants are probably aware, we've been dabbling with pre-sale, like we did with a child and with our NFL warmers. It's still early, but so far this approach seems to be working really well, and it's a win-win. It allows consultants more time to market these products to their customers, and for us at Sensi, it allows us to manage inventory levels better and hopefully avoid product sellouts within minutes. We've also seen some very good results with our paid advertising spend on social media last year and also the first half of this year. It's a great way for us to introduce Sensi products and the Sensi brand to potential new customers who are not familiar with Sensi. And so we'll continue to increase those efforts and then pass on interested customers on to consultants. One other thing we're starting to do more of is we're starting to work with social influencers, people who have earned a following on social media and who align well with the Sensi brand. We are intentionally focusing our efforts on micro and nano influencers. These are people who don't necessarily have a huge following yet, but who align very closely with our brand values and our brand perspective. In working with other direct selling companies, we're finding that these micro and nano influencers actually can be more effective in influencing their followers than larger or celebrity type influencers because they're perceived as more credible and authentic. I keep wondering what's less than micro. That would be me. That's a whole other topic. You know, I, I often think of user-generated content as a close cousin to influencer. I understand we're ramping up our efforts around UGC content as well. Can you tell us more? Absolutely. So for some time now, we've been shifting the focus of our photos and our imagery around the brand to be more of a lifestyle look and feel. That's images that capture our products or even the Sensi spirit and demonstrate how they appear within someone's life. It's more real, it's more authentic, and quite frankly, it's better. The images our consultants or their customers take to represent Sensi in their lives, or what we call UGC or user-generated content, can be just as, if not more powerful, than lifestyle images that we take in a photo studio or attempt to simulate with an on, in, in an on, on location photo shoot. As a matter of fact, I was just meeting with the social team the other day and they sh were sharing with me the posts that we had recently made at the, at the corporate level that have been most popular or received the most engagement. And two of the examples that they showed me actually used UGC imagery that consultants had shot. We obviously contacted those consultants, asked for their permission, used them, and it works. Um, it, they actually were some of the more popular posts that we had seen. So we will continue to provide lots of studio photography and provide great marketing images for consultants to use. As we shift to using more lifestyle imagery, we'll be looking for consultants and customers UGC images that do a particularly good job of capturing Sensi products or the Sensi brand. And then we'll be reaching out to those consultants and or customers to ask, ask for their permission for us to be able to leverage or use those assets in our marketing materials. So look for more details and information from the marketing team on how consultants participate in this UGC effort. Sounds like we have some exciting things coming up. Anything else you'd like to share with consultants before we let you go? Sure, Deb. There is one more very important topic that I'd like to quickly cover. A couple of years ago, the Direct Selling Association partnered with the Better Business Bureau in the United States to create a department or a council within the BBB to help protect consumers when dealing with direct sellers. This arm of the BBB is called the Direct Selling Self-Regulatory Council, or DSSRC. Just a couple of weeks ago, the DSSRC partnered with the DSA to publish a very useful guide for direct sellers to use regarding earnings claims. Now, earnings claims, along with product claims, 
are two areas where the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC in the United States has recently emphasized that they will be closely watching the behaviors of direct sellers and direct selling companies, particularly in light of the global pandemic that we are experiencing. While the USA DSA and the BBB and, the, and its DSSRC are US entities responding to a US regulatory body, the FTC, the guidelines provided are globally applicable and very much aligned with Sensi's global practices. And it is really, really important that all consultants understand these guidelines and ensure that their marketing and selling activities are appropriate and aligned. Not only should we be doing this because of the FTC's recent statement in the US, we should be doing it because it's the right thing to do. And we should be doing it across all Sensi markets and geographies. So in the news article that's going to recap today's session, I'm going to ask for you to look for two very long URLs. One is going to be for the guidance that was recently given by the DSSRC working with the DSA in the U.S. Take a look at those, and they give specific examples of good examples and bad examples of things you should avoid. Secondly, our training team at Sensi has done a great job recently of publishing some content, some training content that deals specifically with earnings claims. So that URL will be in the news article as well. Please take a look for those and take a look at the training and, and that article. Great. Two great resources. Well, Mark, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we wish you the best as you stay healthy and safe and look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks, Deb. Bye. Bye. I always appreciate hearing Mark's insights and perspective. When we locked in on perspective as our theme for this year's event, one speaker's name came up immediately, DeWitt Jones. DeWitt first spoke at our 2012 convention in Las Vegas, and the Sensi team fell in love, not only with his message, but also his striking images. DeWitt Jones is one of America's top professional photographers. 20 years as a freelancer for National Geographic, shooting stories all over the globe, has earned him a reputation as a world-class photojournalist. As a motion picture director, he had two documentary films nominated for Academy Awards before he was 30. His work is well known to the corporate world as well in advertising campaigns for clients like Dewar Scotch, Canon, and United Airlines. Today, DeWitt will share some of his creativity with us. Through his photography, he will help us see the world with new eyes, and in doing so, find our own creative vision. Please join me in welcoming DeWitt Jones. Hello, Sensi. It's really great to be here with you today. To help you all find a, a new perspective, a new vision for your life and your work. You know, I've been speaking about vision for a long time, and I think that it's really way more important today than it's ever been. Why? Because more than any tech tip or marketing plan, it's your vision that's gonna make you a success in times like these. Our vision controls our perception and our perception becomes our reality. So I ask you, what is your vision? What is your vision? Could you distill it down into six words? You know, your own private bumper sticker? Six words that every morning when you said them, you said yes. Most of us, most of us don't even think about our vision. Certainly we don't spend time trying to bring it into focus. But as I said, vision controls our perception and our perception controls our reality. So think about it for a minute. Think about your vision, try and see it. Is it a vision that gives you energy, that lifts you up, that brings you joy, that makes you, makes you proud to be a member of the human race? You know, there's an old story about two men working in a courtyard in medieval Italy. And when asked what they were doing, one man said he was chipping stone. The other man said, I'm building a cathedral. I rest my case. That's the kind of vision I want to have. Now, these are turbulent times. And the waves of change seems to threaten our very survival. 
So what will your vision allow you to see? Will you look out at a dim, half-colored world where dreams disappear in the distance? A world where goals don't even seem worth striving for? Or will your vision allow you to see a world still full of beauty and joy and possibility? My time at the Geographic gave me a wonderful vision. What they charged me with every time they sent me out was to celebrate what was right with the world. To celebrate what was right rather than the wallowing in what was wrong. I mean, why do you think we keep those silly yellow magazines? It's a national sacrilege to throw one away. Why? Because they celebrate what's right with the world. That was the vision I was charged with. Let me share with you how it changed my life. For years, I was out there living that vision. And you know, the more I believed it, the more I would see it. From the tallest mountains, to rivers drenched in sunlight, to waterfalls and rainbows. Everywhere I looked, there would be amazing beauty for me to photograph. And in those landscapes were lessons that would change my life. Conservationist John Muir once wrote, when we try and pick out any one thing by itself, we'll find it hitched to everything else in the universe. And the more I photographed, the more nature showed me that connection and beauty graced by light. And you know, in the geographic's view, man was not something separate from this, just as magical, just as unique as anything else on the planet. And the more I just went out and celebrated the best in humanity, the more I could see it. I could see it in the faces of those at work or the body language of those at play, those in their youth or in their age. I could see it. I could see that light, that light that shines not on us, but from within us from within us when we have the courage to let it out. It was the same light I'd seen in nature that didn't seem to have to trust to expose itself, but just, just graced us every day with the delicacy of a flower or the light of a breaking storm. And it was my job, my job to celebrate it, the very best we had to offer. And the more I believed it, the more I would see it. Everywhere I looked, the banquet was laid. And yet, you know, the more I celebrated the beauty of the world, the more I found this strange conflict growing up between, between the worldview of the geographic and the worldview that I'd been raised in since I was a child. I mean, you all know it. The law of the jungle, eat or be eaten. My win is your loss. Second place is the first loser. I saw that on a t-shirt the other day. That is a very depressing way to look at life. Now maybe it's how we had to look at it when we dragged ourselves to the mouth of our cave every morning and ran into a saber-toothed tiger. But come on, all of us are playing life at a lot higher level than that. And yet when we get scared or fearful, that's the paradigm that rises up. But that's not what nature was showing me. Nature was showing me incredible beauty and possibility standing just beyond the rat race saying, hello, hello. Always there if I was open enough to see it. I mean, come on. Mother Nature never stood in front of a forest and said, there is one great photograph hidden here. One photographer will find it and the rest of you will be hopeless losers. No, nature said, how many rolls you got to it? Bring it on. Bring it on. I'll fill it up. I'll fill it up with beauty and possibility beyond your wildest imaginings. Right down to my tiniest seed. And that, that was just a much more interesting philosophy, a much more compassionate way of looking at the universe. And at some point, I just decided to embrace it. I just decided that if I had a choice between a world based on scarcity and fear and one based on possibility, then man, 
I wish you some possibility. And that no matter how dry and desolate, how bleak and devoid of possibilities a situation might seem, that I would just believe that if I was open to it, I could find a perspective. In this case, just by dropping down into that slot canyon and looking back the other way, a perspective that would transform the ordinary into the extraordinary. Nature was sharing with me one of her most important lessons. Time and again, she would show me that there's more than one right answer. There's more than one right answer. God, it, it seems so simple, but it is the key to creativity. There are a thousand ways to come at any challenge to find that extraordinary view. And I know that so clearly from my photography. But sometimes it's just so hard to bring over to the rest of my life. They sent me up to the little town called Smith River. They raise about 80% of the Easter lilies in the country around that village. And that's the story that I had to tell. And I've got a perspective where I've got picked lilies and unpicked lilies and the boy picking them and good body language as he puts them in the box and a little bit of the region's architecture and the weather. One right answer. A pretty good one. But boy, as a photographer, I'd never think of stopping there. I took that picture immediately. I grabbed another lens, walked over a couple rows, knelt down and found another right answer. Same parameters of the problem, now seen from a totally different point of view. And my favorite right answer that day was this one. They were using a chopper in the field. I got a ride, went up a couple hundred feet, looked down, saw the extraordinary and the ordinary. Three right answers. So many things begin to change when you come at the world from that perspective of more than one right answer. I mean, first of all, you don't stop at the initial right answer. Come on, that's just doing your job. You wouldn't be here on this call this morning if you stopped at the first right answer. But the kick is that when you really believe it, then as you press out looking for that next right answer, which you have to do every day, you do so not in terror, but comfortably, knowing it's going to be there for you. And you really do begin to embrace change rather than fear it. You really do hit the day with a sense of possibility, not paralysis. And you just get more and more comfortable with reframing an obstacle into an opportunity. I remember one time they sent me to the Selkirk Mountains of British Columbia. Beautiful area. And I came upon this field of dandelions. I, I should have been ecstatic but I was not in a seize the day kind of mood. And I looked out over that field, I took a snapshot, I said, I don't know, the light's not quite right, I'll come back tomorrow. I didn't engage. We all know what happens when you don't engage. Tomorrow turns into the next day, the next day turns into the next week, and by the time I got back to that field, no more dandelions. I had puffballs. I wanted dandelions, I had puffballs, and I was just about to leave when this little voice in my head said, do it, do it, wait, what's here to celebrate? What are you falling in love with? You wanted dandelions, you got puffballs. Puffballs, puffballs, puffballs. Pretty soon I'm down on the ground with the puffballs, I'm rolling around with the puffballs, I'm on top of the puffballs, I'm underneath the puffballs, and all of a sudden, whoa, whoa. That extraordinary view, it always seemed to be there if I was open enough to see it. So that just became the way I would shoot. They'd send me out to amazing places like Rose Spit at the top of Graham Island off the coast of Maine. And on that incredible piece of work, the Indians believed first came into existence when Raven opened up a clamshell and let him out. And I was lucky enough to be there one day with two Haida Braves dancing on the beach. This is one of the first shots, the drummer in the background, the boy dancing in the foreground. And I'm asking what's here to celebrate. And at that point, it was just the boy's face. So I took out my telephoto lens and zoomed in on it. And I, I'm loving this shot. 
But even as I'm taking it, I hear this little voice in my head saying, do it. Do it, you're too close. It's a nice right answer, but you're too close. You've forgotten who this boy is or where he is. It's now just a shot of a child. It's no longer a shot of a haida. And so even though this was a really good right answer, quickly, easily, comfortably, I let it go. Zoomed back a bit, picked up the paddle, much better shot. In fact, the Geographic agreed and ran it as the opening spread in the article. And what I began to see was that, you know, it's not about finding the right answer. It's not even about finding another right answer. What life is about is continually finding the next right answer. Continually finding the next right answer. Easily, comfortably, confidently twisting that focus ring of our lives back and forth, keeping that extraordinary vision in focus. Now let me share with you one more lesson about my time at the Geographic. You know, my first published photographs were on the pages of that magazine. I, I still find that really hard to believe, but that's what happened. And I was 26 years old when Bob Gilka, the head of photography, called me back to the Geographic in the headquarters of Washington, D.C. to give me my marching orders. And I, I remember standing there in the lobby, what they call Explorer's Hall, and I was looking at giant globes and dog sleds and flags planted on Everest and surrounded, surrounded by the most beautiful photographs I'd ever seen in my life. How was I ever going to prove myself that I was worthy of working there? And then I was taken upstairs and into Bob's office. Bob was a very blunt man, just straight and to the point and a little scary. He had a mat outside his doorway that said, wipe your knees before entering. Well, that morning, I was completely unprepared for what he said to me. He stopped me cold. He changed the way I did everything from that day forward. He looked at me over the desk and he said, you know, do it. The people who photograph for the magazine are the best in the world. And you're one of them now because I just hired you. You're good. You don't have to prove yourself. I didn't, I didn't have to prove myself. Honestly, that's all I'd been thinking about since I got the assignment. How could I show everybody that I was worthy? How could I, could I best the others who were already shooting for the magazine? And then Bob leaned over the desk further and he said, you don't have to prove yourself, but by God, every day you had better improve yourself. His words went in, don't prove yourself, improve yourself. Bob was still talking. I put together a great group of people here. I don't want you to waste your time or energy trying to show me or anybody else that you're better than the other photographers. I want you to spend every day trying to be better than you were yesterday. Don't prove yourself, improve yourself. I don't know how many times I've thought about it. I've acted on it since the day in Bob's office. And living that lesson, I've come to see that life really is far more about cooperation than competition. It wasn't proving myself or taking others down that allowed me to succeed, but simply, consciously, continuously improving myself every day, honing my skills, focusing my vision. Ultimately, the only person I was trying to surpass was me. And doing that over and over again got me to where I am today. So when we really are doing that, improving, not proving, believing that there's more than one right answer, reframing obstacles into opportunities, that's when we'll begin to lose all our fear of mistakes or setbacks. This is the Butter and Eggs Day Parade in Petaluma, California. I lived in Petaluma for nine years, and I raised my kids there. And one year in the parade, I saw a veteran handing flags to the kids beside the road, and I thought, great shot. And I'm a professional, so I'm going to grab it, right? So I slapped on a telephoto lens, and I ran over there, and I missed it. I missed it. Nobody's given anything to anybody in this shot. 
It's a mistake. It's a setback. But come on, we don't learn without making mistakes. When I worked for the Geographic, the average article was shot in 400 rolls of film. That's over 14,000 images to get the 30 that go on an article. And now with digital, it's twice that. I'm not thinking about making mistakes. I'm looking for the next right answer. Did I get it? No, I got E.T.'s hand over there on the right. You know, amateur photographers will often ask me, how many good ones do you get in an eight gig card? That's the amateur question. That's the question based on fear of making mistakes. I turn it back to him. I say, I'm sorry, that's the amateur question. The professional question is, did you get it? Did you get it? I don't, I don't care how many shots it takes. We all know when those right answers come into focus, they just go, you know, and you got it. But you're not going to get it unless you're willing to press out on the edge of your own comfortable envelope to take the risk to look for that next right answer. I mean, come on. It is not trespassing to go beyond your own boundaries. How many good ones do you get in a roll of 36? No, no, no. Did you get it? So how do we answer that question yes every time? When I take off after an extraordinary vision, there were four steps that I'd try and go through. And the first one was to train my technique. To train my technique, because vision without technique is blind. It, it's fine to have a brilliant idea, but if you don't have the technique and the technology to manifest it, you have nothing. So I spend days, weeks, months with my technique, f-stops and shutter speeds and strobes so that, that when nature presented me with a window of opportunity, I wasn't worried about what lens was on my camera. I was there, ready to capture it. I call this one midlife rebirth. So first, I want to train my technique. And then I want to put myself in the place of most potential. The place of most potential. If nature is going to open up multiple windows of opportunity, where do I have the best chance of finding them? So I was doing a book for the Geographic on Lake Powell. And I was coming back from shooting some morning aerials. And I looked down at an edge of what I thought was an uninhabited and uninhabitable part of the lake. And I, I saw a little road, a road and a car. I, I couldn't believe anybody could get out there. And yet seeing it, I knew it was possible. So I came back to my campsite and I, I found a point on the map that that point was in the perfect direction. I checked in another book and figured out what day I wanted to be out there, rented a four wheel drive, filled it with provisions, bumped all the way out to that overlook. But boy, I was there in the place of most potential the night the full moon rose over the lake. And when you're there in the place of most potential with your technique down, boy, those right answers just keep coming. Train your technique. Put yourself in the place of most potential. And then the third step, you know, it, it seems like the easiest, but I really think it's the hardest. And that's just to open to possibilities. Possibilities you never dreamed of. I was shooting a little story in Marine World, and I'd shot the dolphins and the killer whales, the tigers, the water skiers. I had it. I had it. I was going back to the car. And then just out of the corner of my eye, I saw a thing called a dancing fountain. I mean, you've seen them. The water comes out of one, it goes in a big parabola into another one, out of that into the next. It looks like a big worm going across the horizon. And this kid has his hand on the source. And he's ready, and so am I. And I know what that next right answer is going to be. And man, I nailed it. But I'm not putting on the brakes. I'm not thinking this is the only right answer. I'm not staying closed. I'm opening because if I didn't, I never would have seen this one. You know, just being open to possibilities you never dreamed of. When the great photographer Minor White would go out to photograph, he would never say, what will I take today? Rather, he would ask, what will I be given today? And I would add, Will I be open enough to see it? Train your technique. Put yourself in the place of most potential. Open to possibilities. 
And then finally, focus your vision by celebrating what's right in the situation. Live that vision at the geographic. So no matter how weird a situation I walk into, the first thing I'm gonna ask is what's there to celebrate? What's right with the situation? Well, in this case, it's easy because that just happens to be my daughter. Most, most, most dads would help their daughter in this situation. But it didn't matter. Whenever I could get a lock on what was right with the situation, then I could use all of my technique and technology to enhance that and get rid of everything else. Instead of starting, as we so often do, by griping about what's wrong with the situation, what's right with it? Because that connects us with our passion. That emancipates the energy. By celebrating what's right, we find the energy to fix what's wrong. That's so important right now, is to have a vision that will give us energy at a time when so many things are trying to take it away. As Michelangelo once said, I saw an angel in the stone and carved to set it free. I saw an angel in the stone and carved to set it free. And when I applied these four techniques, I made some incredible images. Simple, powerful, strong, again and again. I put myself in the place of most potential and was ready to capture that defining moment. I locked in those images by always beginning, by celebrating what was best, and then enhancing that and letting the rest fall away. Now let me just show you one last example of how all these techniques go together. And this time not from the geographic, but a big advertising shoot for Dewar Scotch. And they sent me over to Scotland with a crew of nine and a big budget and a bunch of clients. And they asked me to photograph salmon fishing on Scotland's River Tweed. I done my homework. I knew what I wanted to have happen. We came down that windy road to the River Tweed and I had visions of backlit salmon and silver cataracts and leaping fish and the windy road delivered us and there it was. Looked like the East Sandusky River. The river without drama. You know, and I turned to the art director. I said, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. I'm car sick. I'm going to go back to the room. So it was up to me. Just like every day, it's up to you. So I got talking to one of the guides, the gillies, the gentleman there in the foreground. Each stretch of the river, each beat has a different guide, a different gilly, And they know every rock and every shoal and every riffle. And he told me that salmon fishing in Scotland's a very formal affair. You wear a coat and a tie and a hat and chest waders. Now I'm getting intrigued. And then he said, when you catch a salmon on the beat, you take it up to the fish house and there's a book there that lists every salmon caught in the last hundred years. Now I'm beginning to see this great formal dance that these guys are doing, a salmon gavotte on the river. And then he said, you know, Lenny, there was mist on the water this morning. That's unusual for this time of year. And I climbed all over it. And I said, I want to be in the place of most potential. So I'm out there two hours before dawn. And when the light starts coming up, I got the boats and I got the fishermen and I got the ghillie. I got the right lens. I got the right focus. I got, I got my first right answer. And then I started looking for my next right answer. And I turned around. Oh, boy, now it was really getting good. And as I'm shooting that, my intellect realizes the sun is going to come up behind the trees in the background. So I yelled at the guys to get in the boat and row down there because I want to be in the place of most potential. And man, now it was really getting good. And I'm not worried about making mistakes. I'm just looking for that next right answer. And they just kept coming. And this was the final ad. Why would a man rise before dawn to fish for salmon on Scotland's River Tweed? Why indeed, the good things in life stay that way. You know, we are all, all of us, on the same great journey. A journey down a river we call life. We can't see the future. We can't know for certain whether the way ahead will be calm or turbulent. But if we have the right lens, the right vision, we can meet any situation 
And even if it's pretty good, we can make it even better. We can look at what others might call ordinary. And even if it's pretty good, we can go out and make it extraordinary. We can celebrate the best in every situation, in every person, every day. We'll have the tools and the vision to face any challenge, any rapids, all the while celebrating with gratitude and with grace all that we've been given. That perspective, that vision, it will change your life as it has changed mine. Celebrate what's right with the world. Thank you, DeWitt. Make sure you share your favorite moments from DeWitt's keynote using hashtag SFR 2020 keynote. And don't forget to share your photos and comments about today's session using hashtag SFR 2020 for a chance to be featured on our social media feed before our next general session. We would love to see how you SFR. Before we go, we want to recognize another group of consultants celebrating a major Sensi milestone, our 10-year achievement consultants. These consultants joined between July 1st, 2009 and June 30th, 2010. They were around when we signed our 100,000th consultant and were just in time for the launch of our beloved Sensi Buddies. The names of all of our 10-year consultants are posted in the recognition gallery of the event website. But why not stick around for a few more minutes to celebrate them now? And hint, hint. You know how more and more movies have a little something extra at the end of the credits? Like a little Easter egg to reward those who watch the whole thing? This session of SFR is no exception. I promise it will be something marvelous. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Can you guys see the screen still? What? No. No, it froze. Yeah. Colleen, what did your cat do? He's down there, but he's not doing anything. <laughs> oh, it's back. That's not me.
Who could that be? Maybe we have a straggler. A little late. <gasps> Hello! Hi there, oh Captain my America. goodness. Hi. We think the word spread around the neighborhood that we're not handing out candy this year. Is that okay with you? So, you know you came all this way. Well, we should give him something. I have a great Are idea. You thinking what I'm thinking? I am. Wait right here, okay? It's a good surprise. You'll love it. Oh my goodness! Hold that. Yeah. I'll plug it in. Since you're Captain America, you're the original Avenger, and this is the perfect warmer to celebrate the original Avenger. Our Captain America warmer is packed with features. There are scenes from the movies all around it. And the shield can be removed if you want to change up the look. And there's also a special cutout in the back that casts a star shadow on the wall. It's very cool. But the best part is it's launching soon. Since you look so great in your costume, we think that you should have one now. What do you think? Would you like that? I can't wait to show my dad. Okay. I don't think it's going to fit in no, your bag, buddy. No, you have to carry it. Thank Happy you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 She is adorable. Cutest Captain America ever. When? It's coming soon. Yep, I bet you it'll be out before the beginning of September. I bet you it's coming out next month. I'm like, I hope it's August 1st. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm hoping it's tomorrow morning. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> but it's probably Unity not, just yeah. said we need to go trick-or-treating there. 
Oh my gosh. All right, you guys. Like now, me, like I was like, like now? Yeah, I know. Like right now, like you can get it right this second because I'm like, I'll stay up while I'm on a bender at eight o'clock at night. This is a bender for me. <laughs> Pulling all nighters. Um, all right, you guys. That's that. That's night one. Bonnie, thank you for doing this. Oh, yeah, of course. It was better than watching it by myself. Um, that was so much fun. so much fun. Tomorrow's the big night. There's a lot of things dropping tomorrow. So um, there's two sessions tomorrow, correct? Yeah. What time's the first one? And night. Uh, was it three? Three. 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 No. Right. Well, three o'clock our time, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Our time. Okay. Um, okay. I don't know why the music is still going, by the way, but uh, can you guys hear that? Yeah. So weird. Um. Okay, it's gone. So that is going to be recorded, you guys. So um, the playback on the actual like app or website won't be available for 24 hours. Um, so I'm going to save this. If anybody on your team wants it, I'm happy to share. Even if they did not register, I mean, sharing is caring. So you can just message me if so, and I'll upload it while I go to bed tonight. <laughs> so happy Wednesday <laughs> Thursday <laughs> and um, we'll do this again tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.